Hi, I'm Rachel Van, and I'm on the communications team here at Horizon Therapeutics. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is truly an exciting time for the thyroid eye disease community with the recent U.S. Food and Drug Administration approval of tepertumumab, now known as Tepeza, for the treatment of thyroid eye disease. We would not be here today without the contributions of physicians, patients, and advocates in the thyroid eye disease community, and for that we are so grateful. Today you'll hear from a number of different experts about thyroid eye disease, Tepeza, and our support programs for patients. At the end, we'll have a live question and answer segment where you can submit your questions for our various experts. Before we get started, just wanted to say that over the last several months, we have had the sincere pleasure of getting to know and talk to so many of you who are living with thyroid eye disease. It has been truly invaluable to us to hear directly from you and learn from you. And we are so excited to continue to work together and collaborate and develop new resources to help you along your journey with thyroid eye disease. Before we get started, let me introduce you to our six speakers. First, you will hear from Dr. Gary Joseph Lelly, an oculoplastic surgeon from Weill Cornell Medicine talking about thyroid eye disease. Next is Dr. Raymond Douglas, an oculoplastic surgeon from Cedars Sinai Medical Center. He will provide information about Tepeza, including findings from the clinical trials that supported its FDA approval. Then, Karen will talk about her personal experience with thyroid eye disease and being treated with Tepeza. Then, Brian Nyquist, the Executive Director of the National Infusion Center Association, will talk about the infusion experience and what to expect. After that, Jeff Todd, President and CEO of Prevent Blindness, a patient advocacy organization dedicated to fighting blindness and saving sight, will talk about his organization and some of the resources they provide for patients with thyroid eye disease. Our last speaker is Brandy McCracken, a Horizon Patient Access Manager. She will talk about her role in supporting patients. We'll end the presentations with information about Horizon's commitment to the rare disease community, and then open it up to a live Q&A where you can ask questions to our speakers. We know that with the COVID-19 pandemic, many of you may be facing additional challenges. During the Q&A, our speakers can help answer questions you may have about the pandemic in relation to thyroid eye disease and your eye care. The first 30 minutes of the webinar are pre-recorded, but all of our speakers are on the line with us now and ready to answer your questions during the Q&A section. With that, we'll get started with Dr. Lelly talking about thyroid eye disease. Hi, my name is Gary Lelly. I'm an oculoplastic surgeon uh, at Weill Cornell in New York City. Thyroid eye disease is an autoimmune condition. It's an inflammatory disease. Um, it's uh, associated most commonly with Graves' disease. And when patients develop thyroid eye disease, their eyes become affected and inflamed. And so multiple things can happen. Uh, the eyes can pop out or become proptotic is the medical term. Uh, that causes the eyes to become dry. The eyelids can pull away from the eye to see more of the eyeball. Um, and that also can cause dryness and irritation on the eye surface. Sometimes the eyes don't line up correctly and patients experience double vision from that. Um, and in its worst form, there can be compression on the back part of the eye, the optic nerve, the channel that connects the eye to the brain. It goes through a period that's inflammatory, so patients have lots of ups and downs um, and significant problems with quality of life as well during that time. And then eventually the disease sort of stabilizes, but that's a process that can take about two to three years. Once it stabilizes, the inflammation goes away, but those negative effects that have happened typically remain. So patients may still have difficulty with vision, with the way they look, um, and with the way they function. So I think we need to make sure patients understand that thyroid eye disease is an issue and it's something that um, their, their, their primary care doctor or endocrinologist may not quite notice as quickly as an eye care professional and so I think if we can get the words to the patients then they can quite simply say please refer me for an eye exam or you know I need an eye exam with an ophthalmologist it's important to get a baseline so even in a patient who maybe they don't have any evidence of thyroid eye disease, we like to get a nice baseline on them because they may develop thyroid eye disease. Many patients will have Graves and then develop thyroid eye disease a few months later. It's nice for us to know here's where you were day one 
and we know now you've changed and you have active thyroid eye disease at this level and here you know here are some of the things we might want to try to do for you it's really important to to keep up with patients uh, who have graves disease and especially those with thyroid eye disease so if they come in for that baseline exam and we diagnose them with thyroid eye disease we're going to recommend seeing them much more frequently than every year if we see no signs of thyroid eye disease and they have a history of graves my typical response will be to see them in about nine to twelve months a little bit earlier than a year just to make sure nothing's developed and also to go over with the patient what they should watch for. So look at those selfie photos that they're taking. Make sure you don't see asymmetry with the eyes. Do the eyes feel dry? Do they feel red? Do you see double vision? If, if any of those types of things happen, I wanna see them right away so I can see what's changed and, and evaluate. To find a thyroid eye disease specialist in your area, visit tedspecialist.com. Next is Dr. Raymond Douglas, an oculoplastic surgeon from Cedars Sinai Medical Center. He will provide information about Tepeza, including findings from the clinical trials that supported its FDA approval. I'm Dr. Raymond Douglas. I'm a professor of ophthalmology at Cedars Sinai Medical Center and also in private practice in Beverly Hills. And I am an oculoplastic and orbital surgeon, so I spend most of my time dealing with and trying to help patients with thyroid eye disease and other orbital problems. I was also the uh, investigator on phase two and the co-principal investigator on phase three for the clinical trial looking at tepratumumab for thyroid eye disease. Tepeza is indicated for thyroid eye disease. In a recent clinical trial, Tepeza was shown to reduce the signs and symptoms of thyroid eye disease, the proptosis, the double vision. Tepeza is a human antibody to the IGF-1 receptor, the insulin-like growth factor 1 receptor. This receptor is overexpressed on the tissue of thyroid eye disease, meaning the fat around the eyes, the muscle tissue, and it's overexpressed in patients who have thyroid eye disease. And Tepeza is an antibody that binds that receptor and doesn't activate it like the immune system does, but then interferes with the metabolism of these cells to cause reversal of the disease. Tepeza is given to patients via IV or intravenously. It's given over a course of about 60 to 90 minutes, and then it's given every three weeks thereafter. A total of eight infusions are given during the course of therapy. For the first two infusions, they're given over 90 minutes. And if they're tolerated well, then the remaining six infusions are given over 60 minutes each. Tepeza in the clinical trial started to show effects in a about 56% of the patients very early, after six weeks. So it appears to have an early onset for many patients. Tepeza also differs from any of the other medications that have been used in this disease in the past because it's a specific and targeted therapy. It targets the expression of the IGF-1 receptor, and in this way, it really inhibits the disease at its, at its core. The other therapies that have been used in the past have all been nonspecific therapies, mostly immune system blockers and immune system uh, inhibitors. Patients who are considering Tepeza should have a diagnosis of thyroid eye disease. They should also have a discussion with their doctor who may be prescribing this medication and maybe have some routine blood tests, which would include a glucose level examination, in addition to full past medical history, which could reveal any reasons not to take this medication. The most common side effects that were observed with Tepeza were muscle spasms, and this was mostly occurred at the, in the evening and were muscle cramps, in my experience, and patients typically tolerated these fairly well. There were also other symptoms, including mild hair loss, and this was all over the body and wasn't subject to one particular location. Some patients also experienced diarrhea, and there was also a small minority of patients who had changes in their hearing, but these overall resolved in almost all patients. My advice for someone who's considering Tepeza would be the first consult with your physician. A, you wanna have a diagnosis of thyroid eye disease, but you really wanna understand the risks and benefits of, potentially of this drug. For example, the data that demonstrates in the clinical trial an improvement of the proptosis and the double vision, which can be very significant for patients. Proptosis is when the tissue behind the eye increases in size and the eye actually pushes forward due to all the tissue that's accumulating behind the eye. And that can be due to the increase in the muscle size or the fat behind the eye. 
Sometimes increases in muscle size also can lead to scarring and double vision. And these are really concerning for patients with thyroid eye disease. One thing to consider in the use of Tepeza is if you have a history of inflammatory bowel disease. Tepeza could make inflammatory bowel disease worse or the symptoms of that disease worse. Tepeza can cause an increase in blood sugar. So anyone who has diabetes or maybe even pre-diabetic where this is followed with their physician should consult their physician prior to taking Tepeza to know and to follow their blood glucose levels throughout treatment. Hearing impairment was also noted with Tepeza. This was relatively mild to moderate for the patients who reported it. And in my clinical experience, this was more of a stuffiness of the ears or a very mild impairment that they noticed, but did not require any extra aids or anything that supplemental during their treatment period. In almost all cases, this was reversible. Typically, Tepeza infusions were very well tolerated in the clinical trial. There were three patients who had infusion reactions. These were relatively mild and well controlled, and there were no anaphylactic reactions that occurred during treatment with Tepeza. Anaphylactic reactions are allergic and severe reactions that typically occur within two hours of infusion. And again, these were not noted with Tepeza. Pregnancy should be avoided with the use of Tepeza, so it'd be very important to discuss this with your doctor prior to considering or becoming pregnant. I'm thrilled that Tepeza has now become FDA approved because for the first time we have a drug that can potentially change the signs and symptoms of this disease without surgery and without medications that cause exorbitant side effects for these patients. So it really is an exciting time for this very breakthrough medication. To learn more, you can visit Tepeza.com or you can call the Horizon Nurse Advocates our nurse advocates are trained medical professionals who are ready to speak with you over the phone. They can be reached by calling 1-833-483-7399 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Karen will talk about her personal experience with thyroid eye disease and being treated with Tepeza. Hi, my name is Karen and I'm very excited to be here. I had thyroid eye disease and I was diagnosed with Graves disease in 2000. At first, my eyes started watering really bad and they started swelling and that went on for a period of time and then the protrusion started within my right eye. When that happened, it was very scary. Uh, you, you wake up one morning and your eyes are swollen, they're red, it continue, and it continues to get worse. It does not, it, there's, no, there's no relief. No matter what you do for yourself, there's no relief. You're pretty much in a desperate state because you're, you're experiencing double vision. Double vision, of course, um, impedes your daily life. You can't drive, you can't read, you, can barely, you can't walk without almost bumping into stuff and falling over. You get very, hold on, it, it may, it, it, it just it absolutely ruins your life. It's a very depressing time in your life because no but no one understands. You have all these things going on with you and then your eye starts to protrude and you withdraw basically you withdraw from society. You're only in a you you only want to be in a comfort with, a, with people that understand. That was to me the worst part of it. That no one understood except for for me what I was going through. I had no one else to talk to. I knew no one else that had Graves' disease. I knew no one else that had thyroid eye disease. After I went to my eye doctor and, we, and got, received my glasses for the, my double vision, I was referred to a specialist. She um, ran tests on me and explained to me that I, that I had thyroid eye disease. I had been seeing my specialist for approximately three to four months and she said, there's a trial, and I think that you meet the criteria. There was a list of all of the possible side effects that you could have, and uh, I listened to her, and I, I took all of that into consideration, but I, I was desperate at this point, and I thought to myself, well, the infusions didn't sound so bad, and I'll be honest with you, when I would go in to do it, I basically had to psych myself and go, you can do this. I was very scared at the beginning. I was very intimidated by needles, but I knew that this was the course of action that I had to take to help me get better. The first day of my infusion, I went in and I met with my spe the, 
the, the, it was basically a nurse. He said, trust me, I'm gonna take care of you. So for me, it wasn't such a bad experience. And then, um, of course, three, week, three weeks later, I went back for the second, and it was based, it was the same thing. And at that point in time, you're there for, for a couple of hours, so you're starting to talk to the, the people there, and you kind of, they become kind of your family there. I went back to the doctor and the swelling in my eyes were going down. The redness was going away, the swelling was going down, the, my eye was going back, was receding, so and the double vision went away. And to me, that was the greatest of all of the experiences because you just, I woke up one morning and I sat up and I looked and my room wasn't divided. I actually felt like I was coming, I was getting back to normal again because for a year I wasn't normal. When I look back on the, be uh, the beginning of this journey, I did not feel at that time that there was any hope except to go through excruciating pain and to have a disfigured face. My journey with this, it's, it's a very painful one, but the ending, the ending is great. The, the ending is beautiful. This is my story. If you're having symptoms of thyroid eye disease, please talk to your doctor. To find a thyroid eye disease specialist in your area, visit tedspecialist.com. Brian Nyquist, the Executive Director of the National Infusion Center Association, will talk about the infusion experience and what to expect. My name is Brian Nyquist I'm with the National Infusion Center Association, uh, which is a 501c3 nonprofit patient advocacy organization and a nationally recognized public charity. We were formed to improve patients' access to provider-administered intravenous and injectable medications. There are a lot of misconceptions and misunderstanding um, that relates to infusion therapy. But it's important for patients, especially new starts, to understand a number of these different aspects that impact that experience so they're prepared for what to expect. Um, example, hydrate, right? Patients need to be hydrated. Uh, wear, wear comfy clothes, wear thick socks. Uh, some facilities offer blankets and pillows. If they don't, feel free to bring your own, bring your own pillow, uh, bring your own blanket. It's important for patients to understand what to expect with their first infusion therapy. So these are specialty physician practices and dedicated infusion centers that are committed essentially to treating these patient populations and optimizing that experience, making it as approachable and enjoyable as, as possible. We work closely with infusion providers that have dedicated their career and they're incredibly passionate about helping patients uh, maximize quality of life. And they do that in these, in these facilities. Uh, we, we develop a suite of resources and education materials as well to help patients kind of overcome some of that initial fear and hesitation. We uh, develop resources like our infusion center locator, which was uh, designed to help facilitate patients integration into the market by helping connect them with the most conveniently accessible and low cost care settings within their community. From an education perspective, we empower patients with the educational content they need to take a more active and collaborative role in shared decision making. Any of our educational content can be found on our website at infusioncenter.org forward slash education. Jeff Todd, President and CEO of Prevent Blindness, a patient advocacy organization dedicated to fighting blindness and saving sight, will talk about his organization and some of the resources they provide for patients with thyroid eye disease. My name's Jeff Todd. I'm President and CEO of Prevent Blindness. Prevent Blindness is a 112-year-old organization. We've been around for a long time. Our work is focused on patient education, patient access, and patient advocacy, making sure that everyone has that access to eye care. And our role is to break down those barriers and ensure that they can get into care. I think um, thyroid eye disease is similar in some ways to other eye conditions that very few of us expect to 
be living with vision challenges or eye challenges, but then when it does come upon us, it really does change our lives dramatically. Luckily, there are new advances in thyroid eye disease, and so there are treatments where they haven't been before, and it's important for us to get the word out. Um, that this is a condition that those living with need to understand what avenues they have to get help for their care. It's also important for patients to um, ensure that they're getting regular eye exams and that they're talking both to their primary care doctor as well as their eye doctor, whether it's an optometrist or ophthalmologist, about their eye care needs. What's exciting about working with the patients is, is to get, when, when they realize that they can advocate for their own, own needs. And not only are they helping ensure that their vision problems can be addressed, but they're helping making it easier for those in the future who are having these problems or other problems. Thyroid eye disease is a condition that we've recently added to our list of resources. These resources, we're proud to say, are reviewed by a scientific panel, so we know that they can be trusted, and we know that they're evidence-based, and this is really important to us, that we put the most um, scientifically valid information out there to the public. We have our website, a new page focused specifically on thyroid eye disease. Um, we have fact sheets. We have a number of infographics that can be shared via social media, whether it's information about how to talk to your eye doctor or if it's information about caring for your child's sight or caring for a parent's um, vision problems. Then we encourage everyone to become a, an advocate for eye health. We have an advocate tab on the home page of the website, which will help you find how to contact your member of Congress um, or local representatives that you may want to reach out to. We also encourage anyone to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Prevent Blindness does not endorse any product or medicine. Our participation in this webinar is to support the thyroid eye disease community. We encourage you to talk to your doctor about what is right for you. Our last speaker is Brandi McCracken, a Horizon Patient Access Manager. She will talk about her role in supporting patients. My name is Brandi McCracken, and I'm a Patient Access Manager for Horizon. If your doctor prescribes Tepeza, you can be paired with a Patient Access Manager. Your Patient Access Manager can help you navigate the treatment process. We advocate for the patient to make sure that they have a site of care where they can have therapy. We make sure that they're informed about insurance coverage um, as well as any copay support. And we're really there to help the patient to make sure that they understand the product, they understand general disease state information, and that they feel comfortable as the process goes on. Patients need to understand that um, they feel heard, that they have someone to just express the pain, the difficulty, what they're really going through. It's just someone to take in that information and really do something with it. And that's where my role is. I talk to patients um, sometimes three, four, five, six times a week um, if that's what they need from me. I think that the most important thing to know is that the patient access manager team at All of Horizon, we love what we do. We're very passionate. We're very honored to work on behalf of patients. I really put um, all of that energy into helping the patient get to the next step. It really is a role that takes the stress off the patient and quite frankly the healthcare professional or physician in order for them to focus on what they really need to do to drive this um, process forward. The support, putting the pieces together, working the jigsaw puzzle, that's all something that your patient access manager can walk you through. There are a lot of different areas that patients may not have exposure to, so having someone to talk you through the process in a very personalized way, utilizing information from your story, your insurance, your doctor to really make this treatment work for you, um, it's incredibly unique. I um, mean, the ability to listen to patients, hear their concerns, present them with options, and to really go that extra mile to make sure that patients are getting therapy and getting support is something that is incredibly unique to the Horizon culture. At the end of the day, I know I've done my job when patients say, you're the first person I've ever spoken with who even understands this disease. So when I have a patient that feels calm, that feels like they have hope, that feels comfortable in the process, that's when I know I've done my job. 
We hope you've enjoyed the presentations. Before we move on to the question and answer portion of this webinar, we want to take a few moments to talk about Horizon's long-standing commitment to the rare disease community. We are proud that our impact goes beyond our medicines. We are personally invested in the lives of the patients that our medicines help, from the point of diagnosis all the way through treatment. Over the past several years, we've had the great opportunity to meet and talk to people who are living with thyroid eye disease and their families and their caregivers. And we've really listened and took that into account when developing programs and services to help. Our approach is to participate, listen, and learn from you to help ensure that the resources that we create really fill your needs. Based on your feedback, we've developed a number of tools, including websites, educational brochures, videos, and toolkits. We also are committed to supporting the advocacy community who help patients throughout their journey. We recognize how important TAPEZA is to patients who are eligible, and it is our number one priority to help provide access. If you and your doctor decide that TAPEZA is right for you, Horizon Patient Services will work with you to help you navigate the insurance process and help identify appropriate support programs. We'll now open it up to the Q&A portion of the webinar. We'll start by answering the questions that have already been submitted, but you'll still have an opportunity to submit your questions now. We'll do our very best to get to all of the questions today, but if we don't get to yours, we'll follow up via email soon. Tepeza is a prescription medicine used to treat thyroid eye disease. Important safety information. What is the most important information I should know about Tepeza? Infusion reactions can happen during or within 24 hours after your infusion of Tepeza. If you have a reaction while receiving Tepeza, your doctor or nurse will slow or stop your infusion and treat your reaction. If you have a severe infusion reaction, your doctor may stop your treatment completely. Tell your doctor or nurse right away if you have any of these symptoms during or after your treatment with Tepeza. High blood pressure, fast heartbeat, redness of the face, feeling hot, difficulty breathing, headache, muscle pain. If you have inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, Tepeza may make your IBD symptoms worse. Symptoms of worsening IBD may include an increased number of loose stools with stomach pain or cramps, and blood in your stools. After each Tepeza infusion, tell your doctor right away if you have worsening IBD symptoms. Tepeza may cause an increase in your blood sugar. Before starting treatment with Tepeza, tell your doctor if you are currently being treated for diabetes, know your blood sugar is high, or have been diagnosed with diabetes. It is important for you to take your treatments and follow an appropriate diet for glucose control, as prescribed by your doctor. Before receiving Tepeza, Tell your doctor if you have inflammatory bowel disease,
Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, are currently being treated for diabetes, have been diagnosed with diabetes, or know your blood sugar is high, are pregnant or plan to become pregnant, Tepeza may harm your unborn baby. Tell your doctor if you become pregnant or suspect you are pregnant during treatment with Tepeza. Women who are able to become pregnant should use an effective form of birth control, contraception, prior to starting treatment, during treatment, and for at least six months after the final dose of Tepeza. Are breastfeeding or plan to breastfeed? It is not known if Tepeza passes into your breast milk. Talk to your doctor about the best ways to feed your baby during treatment with Tepeza. Tell your doctor about all the medicines you take, including prescription and over-the-counter medicines, vitamins, dietary and herbal supplements. Know the medicines you take. Keep a list of them to show your doctor and pharmacist when you get a new medicine. What are the possible side effects of Tepeza? The most common side effects of Tepeza include muscle cramps or spasms, nausea, hair loss, diarrhea, feeling tired, high blood sugar, hearing problems, taste changes, headache, and dry skin. This is not a complete list of all possible side effects. Tell your doctor or treatment team if you have any side effect that bothers you or does not go away. Please visit tepeza.com for more information. You are encouraged to report negative side effects of prescription drugs to the FDA. Visit www.fda.gov backslash safety backslash medwatch or call the FDA at 1-800-FDA-1088.